Okay, so so far we've talked about the probability mass function or the PMF. Today I want to discuss kind of this companion idea which is called the cumulative distribution function or CDF. So the CDF is very simply defined as the probability that a random variable is less than a certain value. And we denote it like this. It's the probability that the random variable x is less than or equal to some value. And here, this is a big F. And these are big X's corresponding to the name of the random variable. And these guys are little X's corresponding to some number. Okay, so to make this a little more concrete, let's think about uh, the binomial random variable. Suppose I flip a coin three times and I count the number of heads and it's a fair coin. So this would be my PMF, right? I have two of these arrows are of height one eighth and the other two are of height three eighths. And if I add all these up, I get one, right? So what would the CDF be? This is like saying, okay, suppose that I ask about the probability that X is less than this value. Well, clearly it's zero. I haven't accumulated any probability yet. And what happens if I have, you know, this value out here? Well, then I've accumulated all the probability. So at some point the CDF has to kind of top out at one. And somewhere in the middle, it's like I'm adding up all of the probability up to that point, okay? And so I can ask about the CDF for any little x, right? It doesn't have to be an integer value. It could be any point along the x-axis. And so now since I'm starting to draw different things, I'm going to just kind of make a, you know, distinction. Like you have to be careful, what are you labeling your y-axis as, right? So here, this is a PMF. What would the CDF for this be? Well, the CDF would look like the following. Well, one thing to keep in mind is that to draw this in a really proper way, you would use this kind of idea where, you know, up to a certain point, if I take a step function, you know, I can't actually draw in theory a function like this. This is not like a legal function, but we do it all the time in signals and systems anyway, right? This is what we call a step function. So even though kind of what I really mathematically should be doing is this, I'm going to draw it like little bumps up. And so let's think about this. Uh, as I get up to zero, I accumulate one eighth probability, right? Anywhere in here, the probability accumulated is still one eighth until I hit this guy. And then I jump up to one eighth plus three eighths is a half. And then I accumulate another three eighths over here when I hit two. And then finally, I accumulate the final one eighth. Oops, just one when I hit three. And then that's where the, you know, CDF stays for the rest of the time, right? So simple idea, right? Uh, let's do it for a couple of other random variables that we know. And before I do this, let me just say that, in fact, this definition, right, the probability that x is less than some value is nothing more than the integral up to that value. And if we're being really precise, it's the integral up to and just before that value of whatever the value of the PMF is, right? So this is kind of why originally I defined these uh, values. Instead of using a bar chart, I used this impulse function, like delta of some value, because when I integrate this, that integrates into a well-behaved function, which is the step function, sometimes denoted by little u. And so Let's talk about the CDF for a couple other simple random variables. So for example, the uniform random variable, uh, so what does the CDF for that look like? Let's suppose that I have, you know, L possible uh, outcomes. That means the probability of each of these guys is one over L. This is my PMF. So the corresponding CDF is going to look like, again, here are my probable outcomes. I get nothing until the first outcome. And then my stair step just basically accrues a uniform amount of probability until I get to the end, right? So all these stair steps have exactly the same height. 
I have like one over L, two over L, three over L as I climb up the stairs, right? For a geometric random variable, things are a little bit different because I accumulate probability at a slightly different rate. Right, so remember that the geometric random variable looks like a decaying set of arrows. And so here, recall the PMF is one minus P, I guess I talked about K, to the K minus one times P, right? failing k minus one times and then succeeding once, right? So the heights of these arrows, this is p, this is like one minus p times p, this is one minus p squared times p. And so I can see that the CDF for a given value is gonna be, uh, well, let's do this as a case notation. It's gonna be zero when x is less than one. It's gonna be p when x is in the interval one to two. It's going to be p plus 1 minus p times p when x is in the next interval, and so on. And so if I wanted to, I could be, um, you know, mathematical. I could say, okay, the CDF for the geometric random variable is going to be uh, the sum of everything that I've seen so far. And I could work the math out, and it would turn out to be basically this function. What it would look like if I were to draw it would basically be something that I never reach one exactly, because there's always a possibility of getting another coin flip. But I would accumulate lots of probability at the first flip, and then a little bit less, and a little bit less, and a little bit less. And so kind of what I would have would be something like an asymptote. So as n goes to infinity, the CDF tends to one, as I know it has to, but I never quite get there, okay? So this CDF concept is really important, and we're gonna use it to define continuous random variables, which is kind of like what we really started this course to talk about, not just these coin flips and dice rolls, but values that can be any value on the real line, right? So I'm going to use the CDF to define what is a continuous random variable, and that's going to be the next lesson.